short presentations on SQL tuning I've ever seen, and I got a lot out of it. What I'm impressed with is how much easier it is to understand that query and assimilate all the information with the visual approach that Jonathan laid out. So what I'm super excited about is being able to do that automatically. Let's try that same visual approach in Embarcadero's DB Optimizer XE. DB Optimizer XE is a project that I've been working on for the past few years and I'm super excited about. On the screen right now, you'll see Jonathan's query laid out uh, with all the information we want and more. And I'll jump into it, but this is pre-run. Let's just do it from scratch. I'm going to open up a tuning lab, so it's a little icon with a wrench on it. And then I get a new empty screen. I'm going to paste in Jonathan's query. And we have three tabs, and we'll look at each of these tabs. One's the overview, but what we're interested in following up on Jonathan's presentation is the analysis tab. I'm not sure if you can imagine how long it took Jonathan to draw those visual diagrams as well as research all the relevant relationships and statistics. And if it took Jonathan that long, how long is it going to take us ordinary guys like me? When I first tried the visual approach, you know, I wrote it out on paper, I had to draw and redraw and redraw to get it right. And then I got a real cool trick. I started using PowerPoint where I could draw each table as a node, have those sticky connector lines, and I can move stuff around. But even with PowerPoint, it still took me a long time. I still had to go to the database and do the tedious lookup of who's the foreign key, who's the primary key, where is there a unique index, where is there a unique constraint. And then the most tedious part was breaking down a complex query into smaller components to find out what's, what are the filtering ratios on tables with predicates, what are the two-table join sizes. So now all that tedious work, it's all taken care of for me automatically and I get to do the glamorous part of just tuning the SQL. So here, did you see that? I dropped the query in, and within seconds, we drew the diagram. Now let's take a little quick look at the diagram. Um, Oracle, we've looked up all the primary key and foreign keys, so the detail tables are on top. Those generally are the bigger tables, going down to the uh, master table, down to the master table, getting smaller and smaller. We've looked up all the indexes in the table. Those indexes are listed at the bottom. So indexes in green are actually used by default by the database. And again, I didn't say this, but this is the exact same interface across SQL Server, Sybase, DB2, and Oracle. As you can see on the top left, I've got connections in DB2, Oracle, SQL Server, and Sybase. I happen to be doing this example on Oracle, but it would look the same on the other platforms. So the green indexes are the ones that are used by default. Orange are the ones that we're suggesting as missing, missing indexes. Blue are indexes that could have been used, but for some reason the optimizer didn't. So that might be a case where I want to give a directive or a hint to the optimizer to use it. Now all this is coordinated. If I click on a node, then all the relative parts will be highlighted. I'll see the text highlighted for that table. I'll see the indexes highlighted below. And let me, uh, let's just zoom in on that uh, diagram a little bit more. So I'm going to move the text out, and first of all, this is the compact mode, which is I can see all the nodes. I can easily expand it, and now this is a detail mode, and we're only showing the tables and the fields used in the WHERE clause, as well as the pertinent indexes. If I want to see all the fields in a table, I just pass my mouse over the table. Up comes up the creation clause for the table. I see all the fields in the creation and how the table was created. Um, I can click on the join. Let me zoom in a little more. When I click on the join, I see the table, the fields in each of the tables that are joined on. When I click on a field in a table, I see the index that has that field. Vice versa, if I click on an index, I see the field in that index. So I'm getting all this information that we wanted, that we had a hard time putting in one diagram. I can get it all in interactively and see as much or as little as I want. And one thing that I found to be a real pain is if the query has views in it, then I have to go look up the definition of those views. Here's the same query as Jonathan's query. I just put the alternative suppliers in a view. Now, usually it just shows up looking like a table with no information. I can right-click on it and say expand view, and then I get all the details of what tables were in the view and how they were joined. And if I look at it in detail mode, 
Whoops. Let me zoom down a little bit, smaller. Go into detail mode. I can actually get the creation statement. Let me pass my mouse over. Oops. So we actually have the creation statement for that view. This kind of stuff, this kind of stuff is hard to get. I have to go through and do it by hand in SQL. Now, one of the coolest parts, I think, though, is actually getting the statistics on the diagram. So if I hit this numbers icon, there's a little warning because some of the statistics gathering might be expensive. But I click yes immediately. It's very quick. We get all the statistics I want. Now I've laid out the diagram more like Jonathan did in his presentation. So it's the same diagram, same statistics, and now I can immediately see what a good execution plan would be. We have three kinds of numbers here. Above the table is the size, the number of rows in the table. Below to the right is if the table has a predicate filter, like we said, where uh, orders are between a certain date, then I see only 0.3% of that table is returned. That's a very specific filter. And then the numbers on the join lines, these are the two table join result set sizes. So the idea is to start where we filter the most records out and then keep our running row, row set small. So I can look at this diagram and say, clearly I want to start at the orders table, join the customers, and then join up to order lines at the last minute. Now we can do this by hand or we can do it automatically. So if I go into the overview, we can generate and execute cases and click run. This is where we add the optimizer directives into the query, try to generate as many new execution plans as possible, eliminating duplicates, and then running the queries to see if they actually run faster or slower. So I'm going to sort by the elapsed time, and I see immediately we found a query that ran twice as fast as the default case by the database. If we look at the logical reads column, it read half as many logical reads. Now, if you want to get and do the fancy footwork that Jonathan was doing, we can actually do it ourselves. I'm going to um, clone this case, so I'll get a copy of it. I'm going to click on the text, and we can go in there and start giving our own directives. So I, I mentioned how I would do the query. I would start at the orders table, so I'm going to say leading. This is Oracle specific here, but we could do something similar on Sybase or SQL Server. So I went to orders table first, then I wanted to go to customers, then I wanted to go to order lines. Okay, let's run that query. I'm going to say execute. How does that compare to the base case? If we look, it's almost exactly the same. It's a little bit slower, but it visited less logical reads. Now there's another subtlety that I want to do. Let's look back at the diagram. The exist clause on the right, this is a subselect. I want to make sure Oracle is doing it right. So where I would start the subselect is on suppliers. It's the only table that has a filter on it. So let me make sure that I specify that. So let's go down to the subselect. Here's the subselect. I'm going to add an order clause to make sure it follows that order. So leading, and I wanted supplier first. Then I wanted product, and then I wanted the alternative table. Now let's run this query and see if we got any better. Run it again. Execute. And yes, I ran half as many logical reads as the base case. So whether you want to do it automatically or you want to do it by hand, DB Optimizer, XE empowers you to see all the statistics and all the information in a compact interface with a visual representation that makes it easy, rapid, to assimilate all the information you need. So my goal, why I'm super excited to share in Barcadero, is making all this work that we have to do as DBAs easy and leaving the fun part of doing the glamorous work to us, the DBAs. That's great, Kyle. Thank you. Um, you know, I want to just ask Jonathan a question, and then I want to open it up to uh, questions that, are, that people were asking during the webcast. And Jonathan, when you see something like this, because I know, you know, big companies pay you big money to fly you around the world. Does it does it worry you that you know a tool like this can do a lot of a lot of the work that you're you're charging your customers to do for you? Uh, well.